This is the other Tyneside. Small as it is, Alston is the last real town on the Pennine Way. Worth a lingering look back. It's a pretty little town, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's meant to be the highest market town in England, isn't it? Or the country or something. Is it? Yeah. Apparently, yeah. Since we brought them together in Derbyshire, the four young walkers have put 14 days march behind them, 183 miles and quite a few blisters, about 90 miles still to go. They're pressing northwards into border country now, planning to camp at a farm near Hadrian's Wall tonight. The route is the Valley of the South Tyne, probably a more hectic thoroughfare in Roman times than it is now. A second journey has also been in progress of another kind, one of relationships starting from scratch. Only Jonathan Hayden at the front as usual and his henchman David Whiting were friends before the walk started. Sue Gartland, the ever cheerful lead student, and especially Sarah Gibson, 17 and still at school, have had to find their own space in the team. What other uh, long distance footpaths are there that we could do? Coast to coast. That's yeah. one I'd like to do, actually. Where does it yeah. go from? St. Bees, isn't it? No, St. Well, Bees. Start to... that way, I suppose. I think most people start on um, Robin Hood's Bay and walk to St. Bees Head. Yeah. And what else is it? Pembroke Shore Coast. Cornish Coastal Path. Uh, Offers Dyke, I'd like to do, along the Welsh border, is it? Mm. Yeah. Following the Dyke. Yeah. Um, Right the <laughs> Hard to believe that on day one, Jonathan's conversation was a virtual monologue, making him wonder if he was talking to himself. The walking itself took all their concentration then. All those long-distance footpaths sound a bit grand, and so they are, in the length they run to and the places they go. But in a sense, they aren't real paths at all. They aren't the product of centuries of use by people wanting to get themselves or their flocks or their pack horse trains from A to B. The Pennine Way was set up in 1965 by Act of Parliament. There are places it uses the ancient trackways, others where our ancestors saw no good reason to go at all. And here, it can be a bit of a scramble. <laughs> Go on, Sue, you can do it. Am I in there? Look at it, bottom way, Sue. Sorry? It's easy on the top. I'm a smallest, I probably have the least problem. You want to see me? Can't look back at me, John. He's looking down there. <laughs> a big drop. <laughs> I don't know if my sack's going to go The South Tyne River swirls onwards and northwards before turning right for Newcastle. It hasn't got the big waterfalls of the Tees, or, thanks to Newcastle, the salmon of the great fly-fishing rivers. But its wooded valley is one of the stretches of light pastoral relief, with which the Pennine Way rewards you for the more gruelling bits. There's room in the valley for a road and railway, though trains, alas, no longer rumble over its viaducts. The loudest thing round here is the pair of shorts David Whiting's got on. Obviously, Jonathan Hayden doesn't want to be seen out with them. The Pennine Way twists and turns through the dale to get off the modern road as fast as possible. The true walker is always a bit uncomfortable on tarmac, physically and morally. sanctified by age and disuse is naturally more attractive, though even it may not get all the respect it deserves. What's the maiden way? A robot ten stone. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, what is it? Oh, I think we're walking on it. Yeah, but well, what is it? It's a Roman road. That was awful, David. That's <laughs> quite a disgrace. That's funny, that. <laughs> Shorts 
it turns out, are being warned to win a bet that he couldn't get them on television. There's no excuse for the joke. Better put it down to the fact that everybody's now beginning to think about the end of the way, though not tempting fate, by talking about it. The walking won't long stay as easy as it is in the green fields of Northumberland. When you approach Hadrian's Wall, you've clocked up 200 miles and may feel as though your job's done. It isn't. And the nine miles along the wall itself will be made harder by the need of the film crew to see everything at least twice. Morning. Morning. Um, it's about nine today. We should end up at Highsteads today. The yeah. Roman Fort. Garden Mill? Mm. Yeah. There's lots of kind of quarries and pools and what have you. And some bits of the wall are still, you know, hard. The food and facilities at Woodhead Farm are well worth the short detour there and back. But are we ready for the educational part? This one of them uh, male castles are called, Sue? Yeah. Uh, male Castle 42. From which end? So Carlisle, male castles were built adjoining the south side of the wall at intervals of one Roman mile. And between them are built two turrets. A space to equal distances for use as lookout towers. Look. It's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. You can still see this one. I mean, where it was. It's a lot more compared to down there, near yeah. the farm we stayed at. Going on there. It's quite amazing, isn't it? You know, there's lots of it left. Mm. Unless it's been uh, re restored. Rest well, I was going to say revamped. Restored, yeah. Probably has. I don't think the archaeologists would care for revamped somehow. The mile castles are numbered from Wall's End and were crucial factors in the strategy to keep out the Picts and the Scots. We've given up that struggle altogether now. And although there's still plenty of Hadrian's Wall to see, nowadays it doesn't even keep out the invading north wind. Really protecting us now, John. <laughs> I don't know if it had just blow kind of from Scotland down to England, we'd be really well protected <laughs> instead of from America to Belgium or wherever it's going. It can't have been much fun patrolling here on a January night, least of all in those natty little skirts Roman soldiers are always portrayed as wearing. Apparently, I, I, I was um, reading Wainwright oh, yes, last John. night, <laughs> and he thinks that um, the Pennine Way should actually finish here, sure. at Hadrian's Wall, because it is the, the actual natural, ge you know, geographical end of the Pennines. Yeah. And um, he thinks it should start at Dovedale in Derbyshire, and just finish here. Which would not make it any shorter, but it would uh, just make it literally the Pennine Way, you know. Alfred Wainwright is the author and artist of the best walkers' handbooks for the Pennine Way and every other major walk in the north. He's nothing if not a purist. But he has a good word and a warning about High Shield Crag. Its sheer face with a hundred roots on it earn a wistful farewell from Jonathan, who's a keen climber. The wall's wide enough and solid enough to walk on here, and two Roman miles, a bit shorter than ours, take the walkers to a short diversion, one that everybody should make.
Housesteads is one of the most impressive of the major forts on the wall, once a military base for a thousand troops, more men than nowadays live in Alston, the last town we saw on the Pennine Way. It probably had more amenities too, but we don't vouch for Jonathan's Latin pronunciation. Quite a large hospital, wasn't it? Mm. A veiled tudinarium. Mm. I wonder the new to the hospital. Do you think all these little square bits and those little separate places for the bed? I know they look like individual wards, don't they? Yeah. This looks after them well in those days. I don't know, some of them look too small, actually. The hospital seems to be kind of situated right in the middle, doesn't it, of the yeah. whole fort? You know, it's... Uh, yeah. That's latrines, this. Pardon? The latrines. They are the latrines, are they? Yeah. Toilets. By gum. It looks as if water must have come down there. Right it's around. On the downhill slope, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's it. And then out to there's a hall under the wall. So it's like, this is like a sewerage pipe, you know? Mm, must be. Mm. It's thick below me, isn't it? No. Wainwright identifies a condition known as wall fever, a passionate urge to stay and find out more when you should be pushing on to Bellingham, as the locals call it. The route lies through the first of the great northern forests. <laughs> Yeah. Should do. We should get out of the wind once we're in here. Sorry? We should get out of the wind once we're in here, which will be a relief. You going to close it, Dave? Yeah. Yep. Done it? Ah, done it. The sun was a bit hotter to be a fantastic. Is that that one? It's not all very dark in the front of me. All the life is on the edges and at the very top, isn't it? Forest walking oppresses some people. It is dark, paths are remorselessly straight, and the trees are, as Wainwright says, factory farmed, deprived of sunlight, so they grow higher in search of it. Never do you pass so many trees with so little bird song. This is the end of the forest now. Finish. Mm. Okay. Is, is it? Yeah. Is this the north end? The north end, Sue? Yes. Because we were... Tees at Thornstead. wonder where that is. I'm going to stop. Homestead Farm. It's about a mile away, shall we? It's not mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Homestead Farm, eh? Mm -hmm. It's about a mile down here. Suits mm -hmm. me. OK. I hope they do scones and cream and jam and hot buttered toast and packets of biscuits and <laughs> all that sort of... <laughs> I, wouldn't, stuff. I wouldn't build your hopes up too much, John. To, uh, get past this bull. Is that a family bull? I don't know. Does it got there's a fine specimen? Oh, Does yeah. it got any? Hey, who Come on. 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 Doesn't look very uh, Ooh, does it? promising. Hello? <laughs> no one in. In the lock. Oh, well. There goes our cup of tea. I was looking forward to that. They do with me already. Well, we may as well You've not hang around. Biscuits. You got biscuits, too? Got some biscuits. Yeah. It's a shame, I was looking forward to that. Yeah, me. <laughs> nice 
nice little crack this, Dave. It is, isn't it? Only if there's a guidebook for it. No, I think it'd be too small. It's a bit larger. Love it to dry. Yeah, that's true. We haven't got time for you to stop and mess around, have No, I know. No time. No climbing boots. After the parceled up gloom of the man-made forests, the open path is gloriously unconfined, a reminder of what people walk on Moor and Mountain for, to feel free. That must be Bellingham. Well, in, uh, was it cards again? Where did it go, eh? Bellingham. Bellingham. Finishing a valley. It's not a very pretty town, is it? It's not really. It looks quite industrial. The, the centre bay looks quite sort of oldy worldy. <coughs> Stone cottages and what have you, but it's such a spread. It looks quite tiny. Bellingham's pretty enough when you realise it's the last place to shop on the entire Pennine Way. Time to pitch camp. The last full day before the Scottish border, but it's a bit early to let bells of triumph ring even in your head. There's a school of thought that says the northern end of the Pennine Way is even tougher than Kinder Scout. In fact, there are ugly reminders to come of those bleak, black bogs and bleaker weather. Yeah, I'll be, <laughs> yeah, I'll be glad I've put mine on now. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, going to be bone dry and the sun's going to come out. And we're all going to get sunstroke <laughs> or something like that. I could tell you what fish went up this morning. Pardon? Why? I could tell you what fish went up. Why? You do not bloody shouting about. Yeah, he's yelling, getting everyone out to bed. Oh, yeah. A hint of aggro on the dire and humid slog up to the ridge. One thing you quickly learn on the Pennine Way is that if the weather's good, then the countryside will be good and you'll feel good. And of course, the reverse is also true. The unity is obvious to those who live close to the elements, but lost on 20th century city dwellers. Mm, so cool. Oh, How about a Mars bar to oh, pick you up and shift you on your feet? <coughs> yes, You've got them somewhere. <coughs> oh. Um, it's just forestry now, too. It? Voila. Okay. It's what? It's forestry, like this, all the way. Voila. Voila. Thank you. Is it? Four and a half five miles. miles. Yeah. Voila. Thank you. Yeah, I hope there's one left for me. I think you're going to learn, you know. I think so as well. Well, I don't, I'm cool. I don't intend to sit here all night, lad. We no, can no, walk but... quite fast through this forest. We can run as long. We can run if you like. No, no, we can walk fast. <laughs> yeah, fast walk. Mm. We'll give you our tent. And you can run with that. Mm. Have a pitch for us. Mm. Put the dinner tea on. on. Mm. <laughs> Very good idea. Or at least get, the, get a cup of tea on. Yeah. Do you want to do that, then? How far is it? Well, Hope <laughs> <laughs> the weather cheers up for yeah. tomorrow. It'd be nice if it was um, like it was this morning. Oh, yeah. When we're going over the Cheviots because yeah. I'd like to come down. Day, yeah. I'd like to come down to Kirk Yetto like that in the sun. Yeah. In the sun, not absolute blinding rain or wind or something. I'm tired. Mm. It'll take me long to get to sleep tonight. Mm. I'm not looking forward to the last 30 miles. Some people do it all in one day, you know. Oh. <laughs> Never. Mm. At least it'd be quite gentle if we do it, what, 250? It's about 15 miles. Yeah. The reason some people do the last 29 miles in one go is that unless you've got a tent, there's nowhere to stop in between. There's no shelter, no road on this section, no easy escapes from 2,000 foot mountains like Windy Guile. Watch that tree. I'm probably too small for it. Mm. I think I could give up here. <laughs> Right, it's uh, steep.
Come on, ladies. <laughs> We've got all day, haven't we? We must have taken half a day to get up there. We've done it. It's not that easy, that. Right. Well, see? Sun's coming out. This is Lamb Hill, isn't it? What No, not yet. Isn't it? Oh. <laughs> so much for my <laughs> map reading. Let me get you that <laughs> map, Johnny. In their minds, they're looking impatiently for the end. But on the long line of the Cheviots, where you walk alternate stretches in Scotland and England, you're never quite as far on as you think. There's always one more rolling mountain between you and where you want to be, especially when the drizzle comes down. See that huge uh, thing there? It's called Windy Gale. Is it? Guess where we've got to go. Is it top of it? To the top of it. <laughs> yeah. Nice. This Scottish section of the Pennine Way wasn't completed until 1977, Scotland needing an extra Act of Parliament. The views are terrific, but eager for the end, you still wonder with Wainwright if the extra is worth it. But then suddenly, 14 and a half miles seems like nothing at all. They don't have to climb the Cheviot, but there's time and there's a bit of pride involved. Who's first out of the sleeping bag this morning? Hey, Johnny. Yeah, it's not so warm. So, is it misty? Uh, no, yeah. It is on hill, at the top. Not down here, though. No. <sighs> Morning, Sarah. Morning. Is Sue up? No. Still asleep. Come on, Susan. Sue? Wakey, wakey. It's a bit cold out here. I'm going to have to get up. Only 15 miles to go. Two minutes, sir, so drag you out. <laughs> she says you might have to. Oh, dear. <laughs> Could be a bother. Go on, Dave. I daren't. Go in. You were strange. You think without your rucksack on. Oh, it's great. As the Cheviot's an extra, and they'll have to come back to the same place to complete the descent to Kirk Yetton, they take off their packs for the climb. I hope it's not like this all the way up. Looks like it's going to be. I'm not going that way. It's a bit deep, that. <laughs> Oh. Hang on. <laughs> I'm a bit... I'm going right <coughs> bit worried now, in case I go in. So if we can turn right round and go back again. Got to reach the top first. Well, so we've done it. And I don't suppose everyone walks up the path and kind of... I'm sure what they're doing. Just to walk straight back down again. You may as well do it, haven't you? You may as well... So, I nearly lost my trainer there. Well, we've reached it. Mm. Should we go? I'm waking good up for Tom. Well, there's, there's nothing to do, isn't there? It's not, it's not what I imagined. I thought it'd be not steep, of course. Yeah, I thought it'd be a steeper hill. A trig point in a peat bog. And that, as David's just discovered, has all the appeal and some of the texture of cold stew. The things you do for fun. So it's press on to Kirk Yetham, counting the miles and the half miles now. There are two routes down, both apparently chosen to cram in more hills. But Sue should get her way and arrive in the sunshine. Perhaps she'll look happier if she does. 
I think out your tomb must be over that hill up there. Can you see Shots the farm? Down. Can you see that farm there? The one with the white roof? Yeah. yeah. I think that must be Burnside. And from there, it's just two miles. Is it two? Two and a half. Two further and a half. on than that farm. Yeah, yeah. But over to the left. It's got miles to go. <laughs> Five. <laughs> John. Five miles. It's just an ordinary little village when you get there. No bands playing, no medals. So how do you feel when you finally reach the pub where it officially ends? I think it's actually just village to village. <laughs> is it? So we finished now. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, really good, right. It? Or should we count it in the pub? No, the pub will finish. The pub will finish, OK. So what's that? 270 miles? 270 miles. Mm. Nearly, nearly. <laughs> ah, I think we've done 270. Yeah, I'm sure we have. We've two, done more than that, more walking around corners. Over your peat bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Going around the peat bowl. Around the peat bowl. Through the peat bowl. Look, <laughs> end of Pennine Way. Triumph? Elation? A funny sort of regret, perhaps? They'll only really know tomorrow when they don't have to crawl out of bed, pull on their boots and crack on in whatever the weather. The Long Walk is an institution to which they've all belonged and they alone. The waiting drinks are courtesy of the film crew. Cynics say it's their first useful service in three weeks. Well. Cheers. Cheers. We did it. Cheers, John. Cheers. We did it to the last. Jonathan, who stayed on at school to do A-levels but hasn't been able to get a job that appeals to him, can go home and take up the search. Sue will return to university and to the cooking, the rugby and the weekend walks in the Dales. David, well, he's worried about redundancy in the engineering shop where he's an apprentice. And will school and the Duke of Edinburgh Gold Award seem quite the same for Sarah? Exam results are waiting for her when she gets home. They've grown comfortable with the routine, with each other and with themselves. They'll have to wrench themselves away from all that. Yes, I'd like to do the Pennine Way sometime, people say. Or more honestly, I'd like to be able to say, I've done it. Well, they have and they can. Let's hope their ordinary shoes don't pinch tomorrow. Sue, so drag you out. <laughs> she says she might have to. Oh dear. <laughs> Could be a bother. Go on, Dave. I daren't. Go in. You look strange, you think without your rucksack on. Oh, it's great. As the Cheviot's an extra, and they'll have to come back to the same place to complete the descent to Kirk Yetton, they take off their packs for the climb. I hope it's not like this all the way up. Looks like it's going to be. I'm not going. I'm not. I'm not going that way. A bit deep, that. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I'm a bit. I'm going right that way. <laughs> bit worried now. In case I go in. So if we can turn right round and go back again. Got to reach the top first. Well, we've done it. And I don't suppose everyone walks up the path and kind of... I sure what they're doing. ...just to walk straight back down again. You may as well do it, haven't you? You may as well... Oh. 
saw. I nearly lost my trainer there. Well, we've reached it. Mm. Should we go? I'm very keen to get off the top. Well, it's, it's nothing to do, isn't it? It's not, it's not what I imagined. I thought it'd be a lot steeper, Yeah, I thought it would be a steeper hill. A trig point in a peat bog. And that, as David's just discovered, has all the appeal and some of the texture of cold stew. The things you do for fun. So it's press on to Kirk Yetham, counting the miles and the half miles now. There are two routes down, both apparently chosen to cram in more hills. But Sue should get her way and arrive in the sunshine. Perhaps she'll look happier if she does. I think Kat Yeto must be over that hill up there. Can you see the farm? Can you see that farm there? The one with the white roof? Yeah. yeah. I think that must be Burnside. And from there it's just two miles. Is it two? It's two and two and miles two further half. on than that farm. Yeah, yeah. But over to the left. It's got miles to go. <laughs> Five. <laughs> Five miles. It's just an ordinary little village when you get there. No bands playing, no medals. So how do you feel when you finally ring even in your head? There's a school of thought that says the northern end of the Pennine Way is even tougher than Kinder Scout. In fact, there are ugly reminders to come of those bleak, black bogs and bleaker weather. Yeah, I'll be, <laughs> yeah, I'll be glad I've put mine on there. It's going to be bone dry and the sun's going to come out. We're all going to get sunstroke <laughs> or something like that. I could tell you what fish went up this morning. Pardon? Why? I could tell you what fish went up. Why? You do not bloody shouting about. Yeah, I'm yelling, getting everyone out of bed. I know. A hint of aggro on the dire and humid slog up to the ridge. One thing you quickly learn on the Pennine Way is that if the weather's good, then the countryside will be good and you'll feel good. And of course, the reverse is also true. The unity is obvious to those who live close to the elements, but lost on 20th century city dwellers. Mm, so cool. Cool. How about a Mars bar to oh, pick you up and shift you on your feet? <coughs> yes, You've got them somewhere. <laughs> oh. Um, it's just forestry now, too. It? Voila. It's what? It's forestry, like this, all the way. Through. Voila. Thank you. Is it? It's one and a half miles. Five miles? Yeah. Voila. Thank you. Yeah, I hope there's one left for me. I think it's going to rain, you know. I think so as well. Well, I thought it was uncool. I don't intend to sit here all night, lad. We no, can no, walk but... quite fast through this forest. We can run as long. We can run if you like. No, no, we can walk fast. <laughs> yeah, fast walk. Mm. We'll give you our tent. And you can run with that. Mm. Have a pitch for us. Mm. Put the dinner tea on. on. Mm. <laughs> Very good idea. Or at least get, the, get a cup of tea on. Yeah. You want to do that, then? How far is it? Well, half <laughs> <laughs> Hope the weather cheers up for yeah. tomorrow. It'd be nice if it was um, like it was this morning, like yeah. when we're going over the Cheviots. Because yeah. I'd like to come down. Yeah. I'd like to come down to Kirk Yetto like that in the sun. Yeah. In the sun, not absolute blinding rain or wind or something. I'm tired. Mm, it will take me long to get to sleep tonight. I'm not looking forward to the last 30 miles. Some people do it all in one day, you know. Oh. <laughs> Never. Mm. At least it'd be quite gentle if we do it, what, 250? It's about 15 miles yeah. to halfway. It's just an ordinary little village when you get there. No bands playing, no medals. So how do you feel when you finally reach the pub where it officially ends? I think it's actually just village to village. <laughs> is it? So we finished now? <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> oh, really good, right. It? Or should we count it in the pub? No, the pub will finish. The pub will finish, okay. 
the wet so what's that 270 miles 270 miles mm -hmm. nearly nearly <laughs> oh, i think we've done 270. Yeah, i'm sure we have we've done more than that more looking than around corners over your peat bowl yeah. <laughs> going around the peat bowl it's around the peat bowl Look, <laughs> end of Triumph, elation, a funny sort of regret, perhaps. They'll only really know tomorrow when they don't have to crawl out of bed, pull on their boots and crack on in whatever the weather. The long walk is an institution to which they've all belonged and they alone. The waiting drinks are courtesy of the film crew. Cynics say it's their first useful service in three weeks. Well... Cheers. 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 We did it. Cheers, John. Cheers. Sarah, we did it. Cheers. At last. Jonathan, who stayed on at school to do A-levels but hasn't been able to get a job that appeals to him, can go home and take up the search. Sue will return to university and to the cooking, the rugby and the weekend walks in the Dales. David, well, he's worried about redundancy in the engineering shop where he's an apprentice. And will school and the Duke of Edinburgh Gold Award seem quite the same for Sarah? Exam results are waiting for her when she gets home. They've grown comfortable with the routine, with each other and with themselves. They'll have to wrench themselves away from all that. Yes, I'd like to do the Pennine Way sometime, people say. Or more honestly, I'd like to be able to say, I've done it. Well, they have and they can. Let's hope their ordinary shoes don't pinch tomorrow. The food and facilities at Woodhead Farm are well worth the short detour there and back, but are we ready for the educational part? Is this one of them uh, male castles at Carl Sue? Yeah. Uh, male Castle 42. From which end? So male castles were built adjoining the south side of the wall at intervals of one Roman mile. And between them are built two turrets space to equal distances for use as lookout towers. Good. Quite interesting. Mm -hmm. You can still see this one. I mean, where it was. It's a lot more compared to down there, near mm -hmm. the farm we stayed at. We're not there. It's quite amazing, isn't it? You know, there's lots of it left. Mm. Unless it's been uh, re- Restored? Rest well, I was going to say revamped. Restored, yeah. Probably is. I don't think the archaeologists would care for revamped somehow. The mile castles are numbered from Wall's End and were crucial factors in the strategy to keep out the Picts and the Scots. We've given up that struggle altogether now. And although there's still plenty of Hadrian's Wall to see, Nowadays, it doesn't even keep out the invading north wind. It's nearly protecting us now, John. <laughs> I don't know, if it had just blow kind of from Scotland down to England, we'd be really well protected, <laughs> instead of from America to Belgium or wherever it's going. It can't have been much fun patrolling here on a January night, least of all in those natty little skirts Roman soldiers are always portrayed as wearing. Apparently, I, w I was um, reading Wainwright oh, yes, last John. night, <laughs> and he thinks that um, the Pennine Way should actually finish here, sure. at Hadrian's Wall, because it is the, the actual natural 
ge you know, geographical end of the Pennines. Yeah. And um, he thinks it should start at Dovedale in Derbyshire and just finish here, which would not make it any shorter, but it would uh, just make it literally the Pennine way, you know. Alfred Wainwright is the author and artist of the best Walker's Hennine Way, worth a lingering look back. It's a pretty little town, isn't it? Mm. It's meant to be the highest market town in England, isn't it? Or the country or something. Is it? Mm. Apparently, yeah. Since we brought them together in Derbyshire, the four young walkers have put 14 days march behind them, 183 miles and quite a few blisters, about 90 miles still to go. They're pressing northwards into border country now, planning to camp at a farm near Hadrian's Wall tonight. The route is the Valley of the South Tyne, probably a more hectic thoroughfare in Roman times than it is now. A second journey has also been in progress of another kind, one of relationships starting from scratch. Only Jonathan Hayden at the front as usual and his henchman David Whiting were friends before the walk started. Sue Gartland, the ever cheerful lead student, and especially Sarah Gibson, 17 and still at school, have had to find their own space in the team. What other uh, long distance footpaths are there that we could do? Coast to coast? That's yeah. one I'd like to do, actually. Where does it yeah. go from? St. Bees, isn't it? No, well, St. Bees. We'll start that way, I suppose. I think most people start on um, Robin Hood's Bay and walk to St. Bees Head. Yeah, and what else is it? Cornish coastal path. Uh, Offer's Dyke, I'd like to do, along the Welsh border. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Austeds is one of the most impressive of the major forts on the wall, once a military base for a thousand troops, more men than nowadays live in Alston, the last town we saw on the Pennine Way. It probably had more amenities too, but we don't vouch for Jonathan's Latin pronunciation. Quite a large hospital, wasn't it? Mm. A veiled tudinarium. Mm. Wonder what the new was the hospital. Do you think all these little square bits are those little separate places for the bed? So they look but like individual wards, don't they? Yeah. This looks after them well in those days. <laughs> I don't know, some of them look too small, actually. Mm. The hospital seems to be kind of situated right in the middle, doesn't it, of the whole fort? Yeah. You know, it's... Uh, yeah. That's latrines, this. Pardon? The latrines. They are the latrines, are they? Yes. Yeah. Toilets. <laughs> By gum. It looks as if water must have come down there. Right it's down. Kind of on the downhill slope, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's it. Mm. And then out to the wall under the wall. So it's like this is like a sewerage pipe, you know. Mm, must be. Mm, you Wainwright identifies a condition known as wall fever, a passionate urge to stay and find out more when you should be pushing on to Bellingham, as the locals call it. The route lies through the first of the great northern forests. <laughs> must have taken half a day to get up there. You've done it. It's not that easy, that. Yeah. I've had it. Then. <laughs> Come on. Get tricky. Right. Let's see. Sun's coming out. This is Lamb Hill, isn't it? Not real. No, not yet. Isn't it? Oh. <laughs> so much for my <laughs> map reading. Let me get you that <laughs> map, Johnny. In their minds, they're looking impatiently for the end, but on the long line of the Cheviots, where you walk alternate stretches in Scotland and England, you're never quite as far on as you think. There's always one more rolling mountain between you and where you want to be, especially when the drizzle comes down. See that huge uh, thing there? It's called Windy Gale. Is it? Guess where we've got to go. To the top of it. To the top of it. <laughs> yeah. Aye. This Scottish section of the Pennine Way wasn't completed until 1977, Scotland needing an extra Act of Parliament. The views are terrific, but eager for the end, you still wonder with Wainwright if the extra is worth it. But then suddenly, 14 and a half miles seems like nothing at all. They don't have to climb the Cheviot, but there's time and there's a bit of pride involved. Who's first out of the sleeping bag this morning? Hey, Johnny. Yeah, it's not so warm. So, is it misty? Uh, no, yeah. It is on hill. At the top. Not down here, though. No. <sighs> Morning, Sarah. Morning. Is Sue up? No. Still asleep. Come on, Susan. Sue? Wakey, wakey. It's a bit cold out here. I'm going to have to get up. Only 15 miles to go. 